Hey, it's Tuesday, the 12th of May. We're moving on here so, uh, just to start our semester review to make sure to remember and kind of just finalize and, and get this information um, in your mind. And like I said, you'll there's pretty good chances that somewhere in your um, collegiate career or even next year in, in your senior year, Okay, in, in the collegiate years, you will see this stuff again. Okay, so um, let's move forward. Measurements. We remember coming back from Christmas. We did went back to chapter two for a real quick review to to kind of refresh and learn the formulas and, and methods that we used for calculating a lot of the principles that we learned in in subsequent chapters, gases and things like that. Okay, um, measurement mostly. Um, you guys got to remember from now on. Don't don't forget. You've got the um, the your data result has to be two parts. You're going to have a number, the amount, and then amount of what the unit. Okay. Don't forget that. Okay. Don't forget your units, the proper units. There were a lot of mistakes on my last assignment. Of molarity. Molarity is capital M. M lower M. Case M is sometimes used for meter or um, Sometimes it's used for moles, but moles is not. You need to do MOL as a minimum for moles. So, okay, numbers and units. You're responsible for both of those because you can't. You can't be. You know, intellectually speaking, you can't. It doesn't make any sense to just give a number. A number of what? Okay, you know, your teacher's gonna know because your teacher. I'm the one that gave you the the questions, but. Anybody else isn't going to know, right? So you can't assume that they're going to know. So you have to tell them both how much of what, okay? How much is the number and of what is the unit, okay? Don't forget that, okay? So uh, quantitative, there, there, there's examples of it, okay? 20 grams, okay? 20. 20 is, is what? The number, right? And grams is of what? Okay, so it's 20 grams, okay? So, and then here were some more of the... Uh, standard international units, right? The the international method of uh, um, for units of uh, materials in the world. Okay, um, matter. Okay, the units of matter: mass, length, time, temperature, electrical current. Is that amperes or just amps? Okay, the amount of a substance in at, at the atomic level or molecular level is mole. Okay, we're moles. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Don't forget that. Okay. Time is in seconds. Temperature, Kelvin, why? Give you a second to think about it. Why? Because there's no negatives. If you go back and you try to do some of those Charles and Avogadro laws and things like that with gas and with temperature, when you're dealing with temperature and stuff, um, you're going to run into problems using negative numbers with temperatures. Okay. So you have to do the standard for temperatures in Kelvin because there's no negative, okay? It goes from absolute zero to zero degrees, and there really is no end. If they, you know, uh, as far as how hot it gets, right, if we discover a hotter temperature, that's just the next number up, okay? So in temperature, positive temperature, okay? So there's zero to as hot as we, whatever the temperature is of, the hottest thing known to us, okay? Alrighty, so and then there's the prefixes, mega, kilo, mega is a million, okay, 10 to the 6th, okay, 1 megawatt is 1 million watts of power. Um, let's see, 1, let's see, um, 1 mega mole, alright, so one, one ten to the 6th moles, okay, that's a lot, okay, so... It's a million moles, right? Kilo, deca. And I guarantee you're going to see this stuff again. So in no matter what you do, you're going to, you're going to need to know milli, micro. Okay. When you go start going from the left of the, the, on the, the upside, right? The whole numbers, you go start going down into the partial numbers, right? The, to the right, to the right of the decimal points, right? Deci, centi, milli, centigrams, milligrams, micrograms, nanograms. Okay. Nanograms is one gram times 10 to the negative ninth. Okay. Billionth. All right. So all the different, the kilometer, a thousand meters, right? One meter, decimeter is, is a tenth of a meter. Okay. 10 to the negative one. Okay. So, and you start going to the right of the decimal point there. 
these are all stuff that, that goes beyond chemistry. This is for all measurement systems for whatever discipline you're in. Okay. Could be length of fabric. Okay. If you, if you're going to make a banner, or if you're, if you're going to make a, a bunch of t-shirts and you want to make a thousand t-shirts. Okay. How much fabric are you going to need to make those t-shirts? Okay. It's going to be measured in these kilo and meter. They're not going to be saying, they're just going to say you need one kilo of t, of t-shirts. Okay, so that's one kilo yard. Fabric is measured in yards. Okay, so um, so it could be a thousand yards or one yard of fabric is I forget. Mrs. Cassidy would know. She's the fabric expert. But okay, so this is just these prefixes and stuff like this in the metric system. Okay, you need to know this stuff. Okay, so there's volume centimeters cubic, cubic volume right to the third, decimeter to the third. Okay, it's three dimensional. Okay, so remember, a cube is three-dimensional. So length, SI unit, kilogram, these are the standards. The standard unit for mass is um, matter, is the kilogram, okay? Here's some checks. You don't need to worry so much about those, okay? And then there's some, if you want to do some, here's some uh, exercises to, to help yourself remember this stuff. That's definitely go for it, okay? And then we with the dimensional analysis, converting from one unit to another, okay, from one mole to one gram, right? To from moles to grams, we did a lot of that, okay. And so you can do it for going from uh, Kelvin to Celsius temperature. You can do it in dimensional analysis format, okay. So let's see what else do we. And that's it, just dimensional analysis, okay. So that's chapter two. Now we need to, and this was just a kind of an introduction to chapter eight. So let's go to chapter eight. Okay. Here we are. I got this ready to go. Let's we need to expand that out. Then we'll do slideshow from the current slide, which is the beginning anyway. Okay. Chemical composition. Right. So objects don't need to have identical masses to be counted by weighing. This is when we started doing all of the averaging. Okay. All we need to know is the average mass of objects. What is the average mass of 100 jelly beans? Remember that? And that would, could give you, figure out how many you're going to need on an average to, to make, you can convert that, right? So, you know, you, this is, this whole page, this is just a really convoluted page. I've, I've, I probably, if I were to teach chemistry again next year, I would probably dump this page because it's convoluted, okay? You don't need it for so much, okay? So, averaging the mass of different objects, accounting by weighing, okay, going through this stuff, there's the, okay, one, the one atomic mass unit, AMU, okay, that's one unit, one AMU is one of the 12.01 uh, mass, the mass of the, actually the atomic mass of carbon, 12.01, okay, one of those 12.01s weighs 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 24th grams, okay. That's that the atomic mass of a unit is made up of, or the atomic mass of an element, okay, or a molecule is one AMU, okay, is the made up of AMUs, okay. So carbon, these are just examples, and this is all of the, just the different ways that we did, started using the uh, conversion factors, okay, all of the conversions that we did. Okay. And then the mole, right? 12.01 grams of carbon is one mole is of anything. Okay, so mole is Avogadro's number, and it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units of that thing. Okay, it's one mole of anything. Okay, so one mole of a Toyota Prius. Okay. If you had one mole of Toyota Prius, you better have a lot of a pretty big uh, driveway, okay? Because one mole of Toyota Prius is, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And if you remember uh, uh, Tyler DeWitt, you know, he was talking about it's hexatrillion or hexamillion, hexabillion or something like that. I forget what the what the whole um, you know what the number classification is for it but it's a lot right and if you had if you had one mole of donuts it would go you could stack them 
you know, jelly donut or glazed donuts. You could stack them all the way to the sun and back twice. I think that what is there, 20 times, something like that. Okay, that's a huge number. It's 6.022 times 10, so to the 23rd. You add 23 zeros, 23, so you would add 21 zeros to this number. 6.022 zero 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 twenty three out. That's a lot. Okay. So and so, are you going to use a mole for measuring Priuses? I don't think so. And if you remember, we used it more for the stuff on the atomic or molecular level, like the the, the a gram of a substance, right? Where the moles of, of atoms, atoms are tiny, right? So ten or with thirty two moles of uh, uh, sulfur, I measured it out for you, right? And it measured in just one little bowl, right? Just a little jar that I had for us to, to see what it was. That was, okay, so that's, this is why we use this. We've got this big number for managing how much, there's a lot of atoms that make up um, a gram of sulfur or carbon or iron or whatever it is, okay? It's just a whole, the, the 6.022, the way Mr. Horn says it, uh, one mole is a the mole is a number. That's all it is. It's just a number. Six point oh two two times ten to the twenty third. Okay, I like how Mr. Thorn, he's pretty, Mr. Horn. He's pretty, you know. And that's what it is. It's a number. You can have one mole of anything. Okay, and like I said, it was, again, to beat a to beat an old uh, bucket, right? Is um, it's six point oh two two times ten to the twenty third. Okay, that's how many of those whatever one mole of whatever you have. Okay. And then the rest was just, we spent a lot of time kind of trying to understand the whole concept of moles, right? So there's all your, and if, you know, you're going through these, if you want to practice these, go for it. You know, you guys, all the tests have these, um, uh, the PowerPoints, okay? Actually, I'll probably, I'll put the, I'll go ahead and put the PowerPoints on this exercise, okay, so for quick reference, so you can use them, okay? Molar mass. Then we started doing calculations of molar mass, right? The, what is the molar mass? Okay, mass in grams of one mole of the substance, okay? The molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01, okay? The molar mass of water, H2O, is two times hydrogen plus one oxygen, right? We were just doing this last week. We had to do this We had when we were converting to uh, moles, okay? we had They gave us grams when we were doing molarity. And you have to go from grams because you have to use moles, right? The molar mass of, of a compound. You have to get moles for to figure out molarity, right? And this was how we did it, right? So barium nitrate, okay? Or nitrite, I think is it nit nitrate, NO3, nitrate. So uh, 137.33 grams plus 133 that's what barium is. And then two times nitrogen and six times oxygen to give you the molar mass. Okay, let's see, is that all we did for chapter eight? All the practices, and then percent composition, you get the molar mass, right? And whatever the individual mass is, of like in C2H5OH, okay, so there's two carbons that equal, carbon is 12.01, we know that. Two of them is 24.02, so you just divide that by the overall mass of this whole molecule, and that tells you what the percentage is of carbon in this molecule. And you do the same thing with hydrogen. You take the, whatever your amount is of hydrogen. Okay, we have five, but hydrogen is only 1.008 grams, right, per mole. So you uh, um, that multiply that, you get 6.048. So And then divide that into the molar mass of the molecule, and it gives you the percentage. And the same thing with your oxygen. Okay, we only had one oxygen. Oxygen's atomic mass is 16.00 grams, right, divided by the total molar mass, and that gives you the percentage of hydrogen, or oxygen that is in in this, okay. So, oh yeah, here, so why is hydrogen times six? Well, you got five there, and you've got one there. Even though this is hydroxide, right, the polyatomic, you still, when you're doing this stuff, you break it down per atom, okay, per, per element. All right, so the exercises for that. Okay. Oh, empirical formulas. Okay. Um, let's see, am I going to have enough time? No, I'm not going to have enough time. I'm going to have to do another 
another video. I can only do 15.